Dave Fawcett. Ivan Moore will kick off for the Demon Deacons. Corey Brighty back deep for the Keenets. Tommy Slather and we're underway. Brighty will let it bounce over his head. Touchback, and we'll get our first opportunity to see this key head offense, mainly a passing offense, Mark, led by Seth Morgan. Yeah, they went to the air raid, and, you know, Coach Walk, as they call him, Scott Walkenheim, he went to the air raid after figuring out, okay, we need to do something to get recruits to come here. And, and they were able to transition their offense into a more pass-heavy offense in a conference that was mainly run. And that allowed him to get quarterback like Seth Morgan, who's a redshirt junior. He's been in this program for four years, and they're going to throw the ball over the place. Well, you see they open up with five wideouts. Let's empty the backfield and chuck it around the yard. Wake Forest showing pressure. They'll bring Ford quickly out here to the outside, and Leroy Thomas makes the catch. He's their top receiver, 55 catches last year, and he gets them going. Yeah, you mentioned top receiver. They're just excited about him this year. Their wide receiving crew, you know, we talk about Wake Forest in the open, but Leroy Thomas, Andre Cooper, Chance Knox, they got a bunch of guys who can make plays with the ball in their hands. Now Rashad Raymond in the backfield, fake to him again outside quickly, and Morgan can't connect with his receiver. That time it was Chance Knox. Falls incomplete, third down and five. They're going fast. Fast-paced offense, a lot of no huddle. Bring a man in motion, now they'll send Knox back up to the top of your screen. Pressure up the middle. Voids it, but can't connect with his receiver. Three and out for VMI to start this game, and the crowd showing their love for the Stephen Deacon defense. Yeah, VMI went with the bunch into the boundary and trying to hit their running back, Hunter Rice, on a little court curl route. But you saw, you saw Seth Morgan, his feet getting away from that pressure, finding a way to throw the football, but good stop by Wake Forest early in this game. Jack Culberth will punt it away for the Keydets. Taylor Morin, deep from the Demon Deacon, standing in his own 26. Morin coming up, going to make the grab. It's 33, no fair catch, and he gets met immediately by the coverage, good coverage by the key. That's Wake Forest will take over at their own 36. And our first opportunity to see Mitch Griffiths making his first career start mark. Only 50 passing attempts in the last two years as a member of this team and Deacons team. But at least he's been around, so he knows the program. Yeah, you know what? None of that matters to Mitch Griffiths right now. It doesn't matter how many plays he's had before. It doesn't matter how many plays he will get. It's one play, right? You saw E.T. Perry go over, give him a little pat on the shoulder pad, say, dude, you got this, let's go. And here it is. It's your turn, Mitch Griffiths. Let's see what you got. You mentioned in the open all kinds of weapons around him, so they're at his disposal right now. Fake to the running back out quickly to Moore. Has a blocker in front of him. He'll pick up the first down. And you know, it's like, you almost are double checking, right? Is that 10 or 12 right now? Think of that little sidearm throw, quick release. And that's what they that's what they train. Warren Ruggiero, quarterback coach, get the ball out of your hands fast. Give it to somebody who can do something with it out of the catch, and Moran is certainly one of those. Look at that delayed handoff. That's what we see so often with this Wake Forest offense. Justice Ellison didn't have anywhere to go, though, as Alex Oliver came up from the secondary to make the stop. Yeah, that was a little bit of a different play, because usually they run that right read mesh, and the wide receivers are running routes. It's a true RPO. That was, there were no routes run, so that was a handoff on first down. Route on this time, quickly out to his receiver. Oliver again in coverage, but pitch and catch works to Donovan Green. Good to see him back healthy. Missed all of last year with an injury, so now he really adds some depth to this receiving court. Yeah, and you get two big bodies on the outside. And they're going fast. We're going to have a thousand plays in this game, Chris. Right. We're going to be <laughs> we're going to be a horse by the end of this game. We got another one coming up in BC on Saturday morning. Wide open in the middle of the field. 30. It'll be another first down for Wake Forest. Aldrich Maury makes the stop, and the Demon Deacons are rolling. Eighteen yards from Griffiths to Maury. Ellison bounces it outside. 
Now finds a seam, still on his feet. Penalty marker down, he'll gain about nine yards, but that's gotta be a face mask. Every flag is on the play. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 11. Penalty is half the distance to the goal from the end of the play. It includes an automatic first down. Timothy Hedgepeth leading our all ACC crew tonight. Take a look at the replay. There it is. Oliver got him. And, and I like what Wake Forest is doing. I mean, they, they usually go fast. It's a up tempo team, but it doesn't give Mitch Griffiths any time to be nervous, right? It's just like, okay, this is the play. Go to the line of scrimmage, call it, run it. This is the next play. Go to the line of scrimmage, call it, run it. And so, you know, I, I think for a first first time quarterback, it's probably beneficial that they're going this fast. Ellison flanking Griffiths in the backfield, first and 10 from the 11, so the Deeks can't pick up a first down before scoring. There's that mesh point. Allison takes the handoff. Nowhere to go. Again, stopped in the backfield. Loss of one on the plate. Jaleel Porter, true freshman. Yeah, they know what Charleston, South Carolina makes the stop. Yeah, they're, they're excited about Jaleel Porter. Talking to their coaches, they, you know, they don't love playing true freshmen. Obviously, you know, it's a military in institute, and so freshmen have a lot of different duties throughout the summer, but they felt like he came in really ready to play both physically and mentally. Loss of four on the play. Griffith's going to keep it himself. Ooh. Tucks it inside. Nice move. Picks up a handful. It'll bring up third down and about five or six for Griffiths and Wake Forest. And this is what the slow mesh does. Look, he, he, there's a handoff option. There's a pass option. And then there's the pull option. And when you have a quarterback that can make guys miss, it becomes a, a triple option out of this read zone look. It, it is, I mean, this is a novel offense that Warren and Jarrah runs and no one else runs. It's pretty cool. So here we are in the red zone, third down. Griffiths to throw, has all kinds of time. Now the pocket breaks down and he's sacked. Evan Eller brought the heat for VMI. And a nice defensive stand by the Keedits after Wake Forest marched the ball down the field. Yeah, you see it. Just right past Justice Ellison, right over Justice yeah. Ellison. And that's 6'1", 210 pound junior, Evan Eller. And a really good stop by VMI because Wake, I mean, Wake Forest drove all the way down the field. Now this is an important kick right here. Matthew Dennis, redshirt freshman, taking over from Nick Skiba, who is one of the best kickers in NCAA history. Four-year starter. And that one's going to sneak inside the right upright. So Matthew Dennis getting congratulatory pats on the helmet for his teammates. He's one for one kicking field goals for Wake Forest. That's a thousand percent. That's go. pretty good. Best ever. Deeks leader. Three to zero. Wake Forest on top. Good crowd assembling. Mitch Griffiths, his first start after playing in about eight games, exactly eight games in his first two years with Wake Forest, beating the Deeks down to pick up a field goal in their first offensive possession. Laura kicks off. Right, he will have an opportunity from his own seven. Oh, big day. Met beautifully on special teams at the 18, falls forward to the 20. Malik Mustafa on the tackle for the Deeks. We'll talk more about Griffiths as the game progresses, but now you talk about Seth Morgan and VMI coming out three and out in their first possession. Got to get something going. Yeah, they got to get something going, and you know, Hopefully they're boosted a little bit by that really good. I mean, it's a great defensive stop. You, know, you, you, you get, man, you know, number 22 team in the country marching down the field and get to stop them in the red zone. And now your offense gets to come back out. And there were some good throws made in that first series. Raymond spins away from the defender. Nice run by Raymond on first down. Give him 12 yards. Great run by Rashad Raymond. 5'11", 210 pound running back out of Newark, New Jersey. He was a second leading rusher last year. Fake to it out of the outside. It was almost interception. That would have been a touchdown easily. Isaiah Wingfield read that play perfectly. Wow. Isaiah Wingfield is in that nickelback position. Brad Lambert, the new defensive coordinator, has kind of taken what used to be a bandit robber position and made it more of a nickelback position here. So you're going to see more defensive back body and less linebackers in that spot. And Isaiah Wingfield read that perfectly. Second down and 10 for Morgan. Tries to get it out quickly, does. Hits his receiver. 
That was Chance Knox in the middle. I have a feeling that Seth Morgan isn't going to hold the ball in the pocket very long tonight. No, no and you, know, you, under, you understand what you're coming in with, right? You, you have an undersized offensive line. Yeah, they do return some good guys. However, you can make guys miss on the outside. You get the ball into your hands fast to these wide receivers, and you pick up chunks three, four, five, and hopefully break one. This time steps up in the pocket. He can run, and he's got some room on the left side. Enough room to pick up the first down. Give him eight yards on the carry. Key, that's moved the chains again. Great job, and the poor job up front by Wake Forest defensive line getting out of their rush lanes. You got to stay focused on where this quarterback is because you saw the speed there, and that's going to be part of this air raid offense. If the pass isn't there, quarterback has that ability to pull down a run. Wobbly stayed in the tight end of block. They got Morgan on the run, but he couldn't hit his receiver. What's going on, Larisha? I spoke to Seth Morgan, and I asked him, what was the biggest area of growth for you this offseason? He said maturing as a quarterback and developing that chemistry with his new receivers, which we are seeing a little bit of tonight. But he also said one of the biggest things that he worked on, too, was being able to make plays in the pocket, but also using his feet. He wanted to be a dual-threat quarterback and be versatile. And so I think we're starting to see a little bit of that tonight as we just saw him take off there. Yeah, we saw him not only take off running two plays ago, but also moving the pocket on that last play. Give to Raymond. There's a little bit of a seam inside. Four yards before Kobe Turner brings him down. This is a big third down for the Keydets if they want to keep this drive alive from midfield. Yeah, Wake Forest brought a run pressure there, picked up really nicely. And you get in third and manageable, third and six. Right now, you, you count the box again, right? And the third and six from the 50-yard line, you're kind of in that in-between area. They got a light box here. I wouldn't be surprised if, if that quick run, quick pass doesn't happen right now. You can see Seth Morgan pull it down. Grant Knox inside. Beautifully designed play. That's Knox who has room to run. He picks up the first down inside the 40, 12 yards. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's that's an easy pitch and catch. And I, I don't know where Wake Forest's defense was on that play. I mean, there have been a few times where they've been wide receivers with no defender within five yards of them. Fresh set of downs for Seth Morgan and the key that's. Raymond out the flat, hits him. Defender comes up nicely to make the stop. That was Wingfield again. He's been all over the field here early. Yeah, another really good play by Wingfield. And that nickelback position, we mentioned it and how it's going to play in Brad Lambert's defense, but that was the spot where there was the biggest competition during training camp between Kobe Davis and Isaiah Wingfield, and you're going to see both of them play and two really good plays early on by Isaiah Wingfield, transfer out from Harvard. Kobe Davis injured last year. He's healthy this year. Good competition in camp for that spot. Second down and 13, quickly out again. Knox. He and Seth Morgan have a little bit of a connection here early. That's 10 yards again for Knox. It'll bring up a manageable third down. Yeah, and it's, a, it's just a slant flat, and it's a poor job by the communication between Kalen Carson, number one, and Chase Jones, the linebacker, number 21, because they completely vacated the flat, and both were on that curl route. And we've seen those flat routes. Th those have been open a lot. Yeah, they've hit Knox four times, three times rather, excuse me, in those flat routes. And, th and that comes from communication pre-snap. Hey, look, we got a guy threatening the flat. If he goes out, you stay, I stay, or I go, you go. There's Knox in motion at the top of your screen. Tried to get it to him quickly, but he was covered that time. Oh. Dangerous pass falls incomplete as Morgan was on the run and Kalen Carson was there defending on the play. Yeah, and that time, it, they did it right. You know, that, that time they passed it off, and there was a corner sitting there for that outbreaking route. So, you know, these are the types of things that happen early in the season, especially the first game. Now they're going to try for a long field goal here. Jerry Rice, heck of a kicker. Heck of a name. For heck of a name. Player. And he's a kicker, too. Yep. And he's a good one, too. All conference in the SOCON, battling for all America honors. He's going to try and boot this one 48 yards. Good snap, good hold, the kick is off. Knuckles its way, just couldn't quite get in there. Didn't look like he hit it as well as he wanted to. 
So Rice, who made 17 of 19 field goals last year, misses his first attempt in 2022. And after a nice drive, the key that's come out empty, but showing they can move the football offensively, just whistled it wide of the uprights. Deeks up three to nothing. Rutgers, the three of us will be there in Chestnut Hill, followed by number 16 Miami Bethune Cookman. It's capped off with Louisville and Syracuse, our primetime game at 8 o'clock, all on the ACC network and streaming on that ESPN app. So Wake Forest takes over from their own 31. After the missed field goal, Griffiths to his back, Turner. Got blockers in front of him beautifully downfield, and Turner's going to be close to a first down. They're going to give it to him. Yeah, you talk about blockers. Blake Whitehart, tight end, just stuck to his defender and drove him all the way downfield. Good pitch and catch on first down. Again, a lot of easy throws for Mitch Griffiths early in this game. Build his confidence, but I wouldn't be surprised if you don't see Donovan Green streak down the sideline at that single receiver side at some point. See what VMI chooses to do here defensively. They had five up front. Pulls it down. Hits Green. 19 yards. <laughs> and that's the bang eight. They call it bang eight or bang post. Five step post on the backside. And look, watch Mitch Griffith's eyes. He sees the seventh defender come in and then looks directly on the backside. And that slow mesh allows quarterbacks to look front side, see the read, and then come backside to that post route. Great execution. That slow mesh again pulls it down, batted straight up in the air, and incomplete. Boy, Christian Dunn saw that football, and his eyes must have been as big as saucers. That thing trying to come down, but luckily for Wake Forest, it falls harmlessly incomplete. Yeah, it's something to watch for. VMI, they got a really good linebacking core, led by Stone Snyder, All-American linebacker on the inside. Turner bounces it outside. Pursuit is there, but he still is able to fall forward for six. One of those linebackers, Evan Eller, on the stop. He's made a couple of plays so far today. Yeah, You've seen Eller and Dunn, and yeah. haven't really said Snyder that much. No, no, we haven't. Um, but he's an All-American. He's an All-American, you know, two-time AFCA All-American. I mean, he's he a guy that. I mean, he continues to work every, and this could be this could be the year where he's the player of the year. I mean, it just could, it, it's more than likely. Turner showing a lot of Ooh. patience, still on his feet, breaks it outside. He's going to score. Wow. What a run. enough patience mark to let it develop and then to stay on his feet it, I mean it was awesome it, he, he did his job in the backfield found the hole and then absorbed the hit and didn't go down and that's if you can make a guy miss you can take the first hit and keep going that's what you want yeah great play plays under further review to see if Turner went down We'll see if we could see if there's any part of Turner other than his feet, or maybe a hand that touched the turf. Our replay official Jack Kramer and our referee Timothy Hedgepith is talking things over. Look see at this job. Look at keeping his bounce. He was stumbling through the hole. Hand goes down. That's yeah, fine. That, and that great job. You, you talk about like using a third leg. They do that drill. Running backs do that drill all the time. Almost every single practice, an individual is you get people around your legs and you use your hand as a little bit of balance. And I don't see anything touching down from this view. This could be a good one. And look at that, running behind your pads. Yeah, he's, he's up. Yeah, he's, he's up still and, moving forward, too. Yeah. That's going to be a touchdown, I think. And good job by the officials, too, of letting that go and not blowing it dead, you know, if they thought he might have been down. Really good run by Christian Turner. We look at this. This running back room and you know Christian Beal Smith who was part of that running back crew last year he has moved on he transferred out and so it's Christian Turner and Justice Ellison in there and both really capable backs Christian Turner transferred in from Michigan State last year after further review the ruling on the field is confirmed touchdown 35 yards for Christian Turner Deeks find Pater for the first time in 2022.
team that averaged 41 points per game last year on their way to matching that total today as Matthew Dennis comes on board for the PAT no problem hits the all-state net and back of the uprights that man's happy Dave Clawson sees his team go out to a 10 to nothing lead here in the first quarter at home on a great run by Christian Turner and great run by the ball boy no question he's fired up for the season so is his quarterback Mitch Griffiths got this Deacon 10 0 our score here just past the midway point of the first quarter Wake just wrapping up a 69 yard drive in just five plays a minute 36 Turner with the 35 yard run that running back by committee continues to be strong We've seen Ellison and Turner. We'll see Cooley and Claiborne probably before the night is through. His coach always likes to run a bunch of backs out there. He's always done that, and he'll continue with this year. And so far, it's been successful. Brighty spins at the 22 and brought down right there. ACC Huddle Crew is coming your way right after the game. Star-studded affair. Jordan Cornette, Eric McLean, E.J. Manuel, Eddie Royal in studio. At about 10 30 they'll have highlights they'll break down the game and some interviews as well so check it out tonight on the acc network and on that espn app right after our game good offensive possession for yep. vmi last time out let's see if seth morgan can duplicate it. yeah they're going to a little bit different formation they got wide receivers a little closer to the set kind of doubles look still possible to attack those sidelines out of here and they do it quickly that's thomas Tried to spin out of one tackler, was able to fall forward, give him seven yards. Yeah, and Coach Walkenheim, when we talked to him, yeah, we said, how, you gonna, how do you plan on beating them today? Right, and he talked offensively, we want to attack the sidelines. They, they've done that so far, attack the sidelines early in the game. And what that does, and Andy Reid is famous for doing this a lot with his teams, is get the big defensive linemen running. Get guys running sideline to sideline early in the game, and then when you get them tired, then hit them up the middle on a couple runs or some big plays downfield. A lot of different formations, too, for VMI. Now you've got the running back in the eye. Nice. And it's a big hole to run through. Hunter Rice picks up nine and another first down. Yeah, it is a really good cutoff block on the backside by left tackle. Watch number 70, Will Reed. Get that cut block on number 72, Tyler Williams, and then it's just a gaping hole up the middle. Really good execution. A nice block from Austin Doyle there as well. Downfield, beautiful pass. Incomplete, though. Boy, Leroy Thomas almost brought it in over the shoulder as Seth Morgan dropped a dime in there. And, and that was that was a, a, a really, that was a great pass. Great pass, really good adjustment to the football. And you see right there, right at the very end. Ground, the ground, ground call. Yep. Oh. It was tough, really. I mean, that was beautiful. It was great. Right until that point right there. It looked like he was losing it before he even got to the ground. Yeah. But and credit to J.J. Roberts for not giving up. Got that last second hand in there. <laughs> Wake Forest wants movement. They won't get it. Morgan to throw. Now he's being chased out of the pocket. Mm. Eludes the rush initially. Throws this one away, though, as he had nobody open. Lots of pressure by Ja'Cory Johns, and we'll get a flag on the play on the backside. There is no foul for an eligible player downfield. The ball was legally grounded. It's third down. Timothy Hedgepeth. Refereeing our all ACC crew tonight. Thank you so much for the explanation. Third and 10 for Locke's crew. They haven't had a lot of plays designed so far in this game for to get 10 or more yards. There have been a lot of the short, quick throws. Obviously, we saw that deep one to Leroy Thomas. Leroy Thomas again down at the bottom of the screen as Wake Forest showing pressure. Let's see if they leave him one on one again. Over the middle. Could not connect. Behind Thomas. And Wake Forest will force a punt.
Chris Cotter along with Mark Kurtz, with Larissa Harris here at Winston-Salem. Glad you can join us. We're kicking off our 2022 season along with Wake Forest in the ACC, taking on VMI out of the SOCON here to start things off. It's about three and a half minutes left to go in this first quarter. Taylor Moore to receive the punt at the 20. He's got room if he wants it on the left side, and he goes that route. Good job not to block in the back that time by Wake Forest, number 34 as Morin was able to pick up about four yards, five yards on the return. That was that All-American we talked about, Stone Snyder on the tackle. Yep, down on special teams. What do you think about Mitch Griffiths so far? A couple, of, I guess, three different uh, possessions now. Yeah, I mean, he's five of six passing for 63 yards. He's been careful with the football. He hasn't made any poor decisions. Uh, and, I, and I think he's done a good job of reading the box. I mean, a lot of this RPO game is reading where guys are, and I think he's done a good job of it so far. Justice Ellison now the back. That long mesh, Ellis, the patience, finds a huge hole, stays on his feet. Midfield, 40. Keenets have the angle on him, but not before he gets all the way down to the 30-yard line. So a big run for Turner in the touchdown, and now Ellison goes 45 yards. Yeah, and, and watch how this develops. The slow mesh, watch that right guard, 59, just turns that, de that defensive body inside. Got a little grab, a little pull, but you see the speed of Justice Ellison. And again, Ellison, long delay on that handoff, and he's able to pick up five yards. You know, we talked to Wayne Ruggiero, the offensive coordinator for Wake Forest. What's this? How did that come about? And also, why, if it's so successful as they've had success here with Wake Forest, why don't more teams try and do that? And he said it's proprietary, man. We've worked on it for so long in practice, it's just too hard to teach, and we don't want to teach anybody else to do it. Ellison, not a whole lot of room this time. Picks up maybe two. Yeah, and he said, you know, really how it came about was they were just messing around with stuff. You know, like they were. They said every offseason, you know, hey, let's try this. Hey, let's try this. Let's see what this looks like. And he's like, a lot of those things did not work and did not look good. But this thing said, oh, we might be onto something. We might develop this. And, you know, years and years in the making and development, I mean, it's been become a staple at Wake Forest. And, and you're right, you can't repeat it because you don't know what everybody does. More into the end zone. Touchdown. What a catch. Griffiths with the beautiful pitch, and Morin with the great catch. In the corner of the end zone, Wake extends their lead. Well, Mitch Griffiths does not look like a backup quarterback right now. I mean, that, that, was a, that was a phenomenal throw in the back of the end zone where only his receiver get it on the run out to your right. Look at this ball come down. Really good concentration by Taylor Morin. The last half of last season, and so far this game, I, I just incredibly impressed with Taylor Morin and look for much more of that as he's down in the slot now. You saw how many targets Jacora Roberson got last year. Now that's the spot Taylor Morin is in. Jordan Smith, the true freshman, with pretty good coverage yeah. for VMI on that play. Just a perfect pass. They're replaying it to make sure that Morin had complete control and that ball didn't move around on him when he hit the ground. We'll take another look at it, but it looked pretty good to me in live, live motion. Catch, secure the football with that left arm. Ball does not hit the ground, does not move. That is textbook. But you're right, you look at the coverage. I mean, that, you know, it's pretty good coverage. Yeah. And that's number 12, Jordan Smith, true freshman. Out of Virginia, and I mean, you, you can't do much better than that. And it's, uh, Really good placement of the football, really good catch, and that's a part of this slow mesh RPO offense. That slot to the front side. It's if that seventh defender comes towards the box from the front side, you go to the slot. If he comes from the back side, you go to that single receiver post. The ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. Tyler Marin. Taylor Marin, rather, and Mitch Griffiths getting the congratulations from his teammates. Griffiths, 6 of 7, 86 yards in a touchdown. Very efficient in his first career start. 
Dennis right down the middle 17 to nothing Demon Deacons. Yeah, let's take a look at some of these plays by Mitch. You know, started off with a bunch of quick short passes that got him going, got that confidence, used his legs, nice made run. some guys. Yeah, nice run. And then, you know, that deep ball was just a really, really, really well thrown ball. And on the run, too, as you mentioned, that's the most impressive part about it, maybe. Yeah, and, you know, I. From the booth, I can see a pretty good shot of that sideline, and yeah, guys are pumped for him. Guys are pumped for Mitch. Well, guys, when I spoke with Mitch Griffiths just about his comfort level, he told me that, again, one of his biggest adjustments was just internally for him, mentally making sure that he settles down. Because at one point, he played conservative and anxious, but he didn't want to be that way, knowing that he was taking over, you know, for his teammate, Sam Hartman. And now we see that he's doing a terrific job. And I think what you said, Chris Carter, how he described himself, he told me he was a calculated risk taker, and that, co that coincides with exactly what you said. Chris. Had a good future in some business too. Calculated risk takers. He can do well after college. A lot of ways to go before that happens. Just a redshirt yep. freshman. Yeah. He, his brother Brett too. True freshman on this team. So his whole family here watching. The two sons a year apart. See that's nice for the parents, right? Nice. If one one destination nice. to go to. You don't have to choose between which kid you like better. Grandfather was high school coach. Ooh, nice block. Nice play as Dylan Hazen, redshirt freshman. They're excited about him. You know, this linebacker, it, it, that was one of the things that Brad Lambert talked about when he came in. Need to build depth at linebacker. Right now, Ryan Smith does out because he had targeting in the Gator Bowl. And they lost Luke Masterson, so time for someone to step up. And Dylan Hazen, great job on that last play. Kid offense has got to step up here, put together a scoring drive. This thing might get out of hand early. Wide open on the sideline here. To your point, Mark, just keep working those sidelines. Max Bermijan, Max Bermijan, rather, with 10 yards on the catch. Third down in the yard. Give to Raymond. Mm. Met the line of scrimmage and driven back. He won't get there. Hazen again. Yeah, good job of getting the line, getting set by the defensive front for Wake Forest. I mean, that was a, a fast play by BMI's offense and Dill Hazen. <laughs> you know that feeling when you oh. meet a football carrier right in the hole and just drive him back. And when you make two plays on a series, you feel like, ah. I own that series. I owned it. Dylan Hazen, you own that series. Jack Colbert back to kick. Moran on his own 25. End over end. It'll give Moran a chance to return it from the 23 up the middle. Trying to bounce it outside. Nothing doing. Good coverage by the key. That's 41 yards on the kick. Limited return. We'll see Griffiths and company once again in Wake Forest. You think about Dave Clawson and Warren Ruggiero as offensive coordinator. He's been with him since his days at Bowling Green. So these mm -hmm. two have had an opportunity to really grow together in, in, in a day and age when it's rare to stay together, especially when you're having success, because everyone wants to poach your guys. Yeah, and you know, it's, that's, it's 14 years that they've been together, and and really this offensive staff, besides the, the tight end position, they've been together ever since uh, Clawson got here. You know, it's been no, almost no turnover on the offensive side at all. And I talked to Clawson about that. You know, how do you keep your guys around? And he said that you know, administration has really decided. Look, we want you to stay. We want these guys to stay. And you don't leave for a better job because Clawson said, look, this is a better job. This is a better job now than it was when he first took it. And I think his assistants feel the same way, and they're going to be here for much longer. No question about it. And the offense is humming along. 185 total yards in that first quarter. In the section, they always show up and show out, don't they? They do. Every single game, 
One of the smallest schools, I think it actually still is the smallest school in terms of undergraduate enrollment other than the military mm -hmm. academies mm -hmm. in the FBS, and yet fans always come out and they're seeing a really good first quarter here so far by Wake Forest as Deke start the second with the ball on a second down. Now it'll be third down and short after a four-yard carry by Christian Turner. Wake wants to go quickly. Griffiths will throw. Turner stays in the block and he gets a good one out to midfield. Keyshawn Williams. 16 yards. Yeah, Keyshawn Williams, we talked about that slot position with Taylor Morin. It's going to be a 50 50 rotation between Morin and Keyshawn Williams. And you saw it. You know, the ability to catch the football that Marin has, but Keyshawn Williams has got speed, and that you saw that speed on that crossing route, running away from everybody. Griffiths looked like he wanted to run. Now he gets it to Williams again, trying to make something happen after the catch. Only picked up a couple yards and laundry on the field. You know, I think there were some questions coming into this game. After the news of Sam Hartman broke of how well this offense would operate. Holding offense number 85. 10 yard penalty. Second down. Tight end Blake Whitehart, the guilty party. And, and I, th I think, you know, for, for Wake Forest fans and the fans in the stands here, I think those those questions have, have started to diminish a little bit. You know, you're watching how well Mitch Griffiths is, is not only playing football, but operating this offense. And, it doesn't seem like Warren Ruggiero is holding any punches in terms of play calling. I mean, the whole package is in right now. And you see his teammates confidence in him as well. Penalty backs him up first down and 20. Griffiths looking to throw Turner stays in and picks up a block has a receiver hits him down to Donovan Green. He's driven back but they'll give him forward progress after a nine yard completion. He'll Inside of VMI territory, and I think I think that ball hit the ground. So they must be saying that Donovan Green must have dropped the ball, fumbled it, and then recovered it. You can see the coaching staff on VMI, yeah. and now yeah. well, complaining that it was incomplete. And then you get a timeout by Scott Walkenheim, and he's having a word with the linesman over on the far side to say, "Why aren't you guys taking a look at that?" Let's take a little look at it as we go to break. The ruling on the field of a completed pass is under further review. Let's take a look at it, and we'll let you contemplate it during the commercial break. Completion or not? Mm. I don't know. Our referee tonight, Timothy Edgebith. Speaking with our replay official Jack Kramer who's taking a look at this last play before we went to break as to whether it was a completion or not to Donovan Green. Now Green catches it but what happens right after this move. Yeah so I, you have to have security of the football and then make a act of football a football move or like time to perform a football act and turning around and then securing it could be considered a football move but I think the officials are saying that it was not. After further review, the pass was incomplete. It's second down. Reversal on the ruling. So Wake moves back, placing the ball down before that play. So it's second down and about 19. First time we've really seen Mitch Griffiths now behind the chains. Yeah. And a good experience for him now. To Learn to play this way. It's second down and long. Fakes it to the tailback. He stays in and blocks. Now Griff is being flushed. Nice catch. Now that time Green definitely made the catch and hung on. Yeah, he definitely made the catch and hung on. And you saw the strength of Donovan Green. Alex Oliver was all over on the cornerback. And, I mean, he, good job of fighting and coming back to the football, getting friendly to the quarterback. And that's why that completion happened. Pressure coming from the Keedits. Griffiths gets it away. Nice job. Oliver was on the coverage, but the other 11, Donovan Green, with a good read, good route, and they'll move the chains. And how fast Mitch Griffiths got the football out there. I mean, yeah, that's not a, an easy pass, and he slung that ball right on a dime. <laughs> 
Turner looking for a crease. Look at the power of Turner as he carries tacklers with him about seven yards. And we haven't talked enough about the offensive line for Wake Forest. You, you talk about returning five starters. Obviously, Zach Tom went to the NFL, but Javante Nash, he's back from injury, who was a starter back in 2020. So they have five guys who have significant starts under their belt. And they're moving people up front. That time, the key that defense. Nice job with Algerique Maury coming from that spur position to make the tackle along the outside. He's one of those big boys up front. Michael Jordan is the leader, two time captain. He was actually out for a few weeks during camp when Mitch Griffiths was in. So they haven't taken a whole lot of snaps together, but they had no complications so far in this game. Play clock winding down now inside of 10. That's not something you see every day here with Wake Forest. And there's a little bit of confusion. So Coach Clawson calling a timeout, talk things over on a third down and three when we come back. Louisville women's volleyball. Then the number one team in the country, field hockey, Northwestern, takes on BC at 4 o'clock. That Sunday best on the ACC network and streaming live on ESPN on the app. Third down and three. This looks like maybe four down territory. Yeah, and then that might have been what Coach Clawson was discussing of, hey, do we use this third down and three and we take a shot to Donovan Green at the top of the screen, or do we hand the ball off? I mean, that, that could be a possibility if they're deciding to go for it on fourth down and take a shot here. Williams in motion. Going to give it to Turner. Initially slowed down in the backfield, but he spins free, and now he's got the edge. Inside the 20, but we got flags all over the field on the corner. This one might be coming back. Yeah, and it is coming back. <laughs> we talked about Javiante coming back from injury. He got a hold on that one. Holding. Offense number 53. 10 yard penalty. Repeat third down. Let's take a look at it. See, watch number 53 on the right side of your screen. Really late, he gets up, try to get that next level, and right there, a little grab on the shoulder pad. He knew it right away. Yeah, Austin White was held. You got to think that had an impact on that play as White couldn't track down Turner, although Turner with a great individual effort just to get free. he do it all again. This time, though, it'll be third down and 13. Make it 12. Again, third and long, which could be a four down territory here. So he gets some of it back to give you a, to open up the whole playbook on four down. Let's see what they decide to do. Griffiths will throw pressure on the edge. They got him. Christian Dunn from his linebacker spot put the pressure on. Maury was there as well. And the key that's bring Griffiths down. Yeah, Eldrick Maury, that spur position team captain. Number one was in there. Watch him come. Blitz off both edges and good job of getting that pressure on the outside by Christian Dunn, forcing him to step up right into Aldrich Murray's path. And it's been twice so far. The two sacks that have come have been poor blocks by the running backs. First one was just Celsen. and that one Christian Turner did not get enough of the blitzer. First punt of the day from Mora. It's a good one. End over end inside the 10 takes a beautiful Wake Forest bounce and a great job in coverage. 44 yards on the kick from Mora, and he buries the key that's down at their own two yard line. Yeah, and this is this is where the key debts have to be really, really good with the football. You gotta make sure you you're probably, you know, the chances of going 98 yards on a drive are slim, right? So you gotta make sure you get the ball out far enough where you can flip the field. And with a lot of some of those short routes that they've been trying to get on the bubbles with those mm -hmm. nickelbacks breaking, you gotta find a way to punch it right out and see. It looks like they got their big back Hunter Rice in it for the uphill run. Ooh. 
Rice is just going to get back to the line of scrimmage, maybe even lost the yard. And good push by Tyler Williams, the fifth-year senior. Just drove the guard backwards. Watch number 72. Good extension with his hands. Winter was in there as well, and Rice did a nice job to square it through just to get back to the two. Plenty of time on the play clock as Morgan looks to the sideline. Up the middle. Rice again, this time gets the five flag coming in. Right at the end of the play. Came from the VMI backfield. ACC crew tonight, Timothy Hedgepith, our referee. Coach Walkenheim wants an explanation. Somebody. And now he's got the field judge's ear. <laughs> he's just listening to it all, taking it all in. There is no foul for an illegal block below the waist. It's third down. Okay, our officials got together. Walkenheim says, okay. Good check. Third down and seven. Morgan's got Hunter Rice behind him in the eye. Andre Cooper, bottom of the screen, 6'5 wide receiver. Good. Beautiful play by Wake Forest. Big hit by J.J. Roberts coming up from that corner spot. Forcing the punt. Yeah, excited about J.J. Roberts. J.J. Roberts, true freshman last year. He played, and they're really excited about what he's going to bring. You see the ability to make an open field tackle. Get around the block. Force me to punt. Good job. Very dangerous return, man, for Wake Forest. Taylor Moore standing with his heels on his own midfield 50-yard line. See if Wake Forest comes after him, or they'll let Colbert kick it away and set up the return. Now we get a whistle before the snap. Delay a game. Offense. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. It's still fourth down. And now you might come after it. I mean, Colbert is going to be back towards right towards that end line in the end zone. Coach Walk and I frustrated a little bit. The delayed game on when you're punting yeah. the ball away. It's not too happy about that. So here we go with Colbert. See what he can do with it. Wake sets up the return. Good kick by Colbert. High though, and fair catch forced by Moore. And so Colbert did his job, got it out of there quickly, forced the fair catch. Wake Forest will take over from their own 49, up 17. Coming off an 11 win year last year. It jumped out all over VMI here. 17 to nothing. Complete game for him to this point. Offensively, new quarterback Mitch Griffiths has looked good. Defensively, shutting out the Keydets. Fresh set of downs from midfield. Griffiths hit as he throws, but he has a receiver out there. Beautiful catch. A.T. Perry. A.T. <laughs> Perry, man. He, like, it looked like it was just too easy for him. You know, almost like he's like, okay, let's just chill out. And you watch him in pre in, in the pregame. He had a, a quarterback coach throw him the ball just like that about 20 times. And practice makes perfect. That was a phenomenal catch. Ooh, Ellison. Ooh, ooh, man. Ooh. And and Perry, Perry yeah. came up a little bit lame. Stone Snyder and Christian Dunn on the stop. But keep an eye on number nine. So Wake Forest fans breathing a sigh of release that, the relief that at least he got up under his own power. Looks okay. <laughs> But that, that, those, those, those things are scary. No harm, no foul. Gain of a yard on the play. Griffiths finds Perry. No Took harm. a hit, held on to the ball. Yeah, no harm, no foul. But he, he ran that route a little gingerly. You know, he, now he's coming out. We, that's something we have to watch. Mm -hmm. Because he he went into that break and just, you know, he didn't stick it like he normally does. 
And you know, A.T. Perry, you know, we haven't talked about him a ton because they throw him so much to the slot, but he had just a phenomenal year last year. 1,200, almost 1,300 yards, 15 touchdowns on the season, broke almost every record at Wake Forest. Ellison takes it. Brought down after a gain of about a yard. Josh Knapp on the stop for VMI. Yeah, good play by Josh Knapp. It looks like they're looking at his left yeah, ankle, maybe. Yeah, they're gonna send him over to somewhere else to get checked out, but that's a guy they need on this team because they have they're not shooting for five six wins anymore you know this Wake Forest team the bowl game isn't good enough they want championships and they're built to get there Ellison patiently waiting for something to open up got a good push from the offensive line was able to get three but yards are tough to come by down here right now for Wake Forest Let's, Let's take, take a little look. Yeah. 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 Look at look at right here. See number nine at the bottom of your screen. You see Ellison. Ooh, that's the ankle. That left ankle rolled up on there. Yeah. And yeah. You, yeah. You, he grabbed it immediately. And now Griffiths is splitting wide right to the top of your screen. The Wildcat Ellison taking the snap. He'll look to run. Bounces it outside and. Gets met at the five by Christian Dunn, falls forward and is able to pick up a couple. It'll be third down and goal. There's always a little bit new wrinkles to this offense and try to experiment to see what guys can do. Remember Kendall Hinton a couple years ago? You know, took a lot of those Wildcat snaps as well. Someone's got so good at it, they even allowed him to do it in the NFL level. Yeah. <laughs> you had to do it in the NFL level. <laughs> Griffiths now he'll roll as a receiver open that's his back out of the backfield and Ellison scores all kinds of flags down on the field so we got to check those first holding offense number 62 10 yard penalty third down right tackle Devontae Gordon move it back Ooh, look good at first Mark yeah it did really well designed play you got that bunch formation bro Two tight ends in the game where they do not do a lot of that 12 personnel. And just snuck the running back out to the flat. Kind of running a lot in the NFL, like naked bootlegs around the end zone. But anytime the quarterback starts running to one way or the other, the defensive line is going to run. You got to let go. I don't know. Gordon's listed at 6'5, 308. That might be like at the end of camp when he's had to run oh, yeah. two miles. Every 10 minutes, bro. I hear. I mean, that that's, that's got to be a like big man. that's got to be 328. Third down and goal. Griffiths has time in the pocket, to the corner of the end zone, trying to get it to Green, defended nicely by Jaleel Porter. That's a true freshman out there covering Green. I know. It's a really watch the eyes. Of Porter. Good job of finding the football in the air and getting his hands up. And it was good pressure, too. Pressure in Mitch Griffiths' face made him throw the ball to a receiver that was one on one and good play by the defensive back. So Matthew Dennis comes on to try a 31 yard kick. And he remains perfect on the day. Wake Forest has failed to score on just one of their possessions all night long. They add three more, and they're up by 20. App. Yeah, that Louisville-Syracuse game. Sean Tucker, see if he can show out again. Another amazing performance. Just hand in the Malik, rock like Malik 35 Cunningham times again. a game. Malik back. How is Malik back? I don't know. Put up more big numbers. I'll tell you what, you drive through, drive through Louisville, all you see is billboards of Malik Cunningham and... Here's the one thing about Malik. We did his bowl game against Air Force last year, yep, right? Yep. Even when everyone knows he's running the football or it's going to be him, he still finds ways to get yards and make plays. Yep. It's always been with him taking care of the ball. If he doesn't turn the ball over and takes care of it, he's ridiculous. Yeah, ridiculous. And, you know, he'll have some some of those games where you're just like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> like, he, he's unstoppable. And, and not for, for really good teams, too. So 
It's going to be cool, too, because that Syracuse linebacking core is, you know, they're one of the best in the conference as well, so it's going to be a good matchup. Continue to have a good secondary as well coming into the year. Seth Morgan complete over the middle. Good time he was. So here's the thing that we've seen from Wake Forest. Okay, so we know that Mitch Griffiths, I know that he's playing against a SOCON defense, it's not an ACC defense, but he's shown the ability to move this team and they have confidence in him offensively. Yeah. Now this defense though, Wake is gonna put points on the board. This defense has gotta stop teams. Yeah, and that really was the Achilles heel last year. I mean, you know, Achilles heel in the sense that they made it to the ACC championship game, you know, they, they lost, but I think the big problem all year was, look, we're gonna give up like 50 points to Army. We're gonna, you know, we can't continue on that pace, so, Yes, while we will store, score a lot of points, we need to make a change on defense. And they brought in Brad Lambert for defensive coordinator, who was the defensive coordinator at Purdue before, to just bring a new spark, right? And hear from someone else in that defensive room. And Brad Lambert is a guy who's very familiar with Wake Forest. Wake Forest fans will remember him back in, you know, the 06, the 08. He was a defensive coordinator here. Coach, you know, guys like Aaron Curry won the Butkus Award, uh, the nation's top linebacker. And, he wants to bring back some of that same mentality, the physical mentality to this defense. And how well can they step up? How well can they stop the run, which they were really, really bad at last year? Opportunity here to stop it on fourth down. Morgan in the gun. Oh, so squeaking wow. out of there, but I don't think he got the first down still. Rashad Raymond did a nice job just to try and spin out. Vondell Bothroy was there. I think they're going to be short. Not even going to measure on it. And, and that push, right? we talk about you got to stop the run. This is what they did not have last year. Watch the push and the pad level of that defensive line up front. Just knocked back the guard and center and then allowed the collapse to come on the outside. Let's see, good job spinning out, and let's see where that ball comes down. I think it was a good spot by the officials, just, just short of that 35-yard line. Yep. And now Wake Forest will take over on offense again. Much to this guy's delight. It's a good Great hat. hat. Whoa, did you see the shirt combo? Shirt, I didn't yeah. even realize he had the same shirt. That is next level. Let's see what Wake can do here, final three minutes in this first half. Griffiths to throw quickly to the outside. Hits his man, that's D.T. Perry, so great news for Wake Forest fans that Perry's in the game. There it is. There's the shirt. Hit up the bookstore, maybe. I, see, I don't even think that's a combo. I think that's a separate order. I don't think it's the same design. I think the, the, the Hawaiian shirt is a little bit different than the hat. Mm. So we bought those on two separate occasions to go with each other. Smart. It's good pairing. Whenever he's at a game here at Truist. The ruling on the field of the completed pass is under further review. All right, let's take a look at this again. Griffiths, it looked like he hit Perry in stride, caught it, got a foot in bounds. And regardless of catch or no catch, the fact that A.T. Perry's on the field dancing right now, yeah. I think that's the biggest no doubt. sign of hope for this Wake Forest team. Let's see how this catch goes. That left e foot. Very close. Wow. You know, you see little black specs fly up in the green area. The linesman is right here on yeah. top of it in real time. Oh, he, what, watch the coach for VMI right behind him. Look, you see, he's right got the best angle. It. And then watch, he goes, yeah, it's a catch. He, I think he knows it. I don't think there's enough there to overturn it. No. I mean, I don't think you can see definitively whether that golden shoe is on the white or the green. Also, he, I saw those shoes pregame. He's got like these cool, sparkly, psychedelic shoes. Only one of them, though. Well, the there was left. two. Oh, there was two, but the one sprained ankle got taped up. Are you sure about that? Because the left, the left ankle was the sprain or the, no, the injury, not. rather, well, and it's gold. Well, there's a gold and a black sparkle. See the sparkles? Oh, okay. Gold and black sparkle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I didn't. When the field stands, it's second down. Stands. Didn't clarify, sorry, Chris. You were right, and I was right. He's got the gold sparkle, the black sparkle, and the sparkling resume. Mm. 1,293 yards receiving last year. 
seventy one catches at fifteen touchdowns think about the receivers not only so you talked about Roberson last year Jakari Roberson but before that Scotty Washington Kendall Hinton Sage Surratt Greg Dortch mm. it's like a pipeline in the NFL with receivers here at Wake Forest he's going to be the next one in line yeah and if you talk with Dave Clawson too you know, he'll, he'll, he'll tell you all day he, they bring in guys and they develop them we're a developmental program they, they, they were, had that on repeat but it's true they bring in these two star guys these three star guys and turn them into superstars and they put them in the NFL and they stick and that I think that's it's a testament to the, the style the attitude and, and, and the ability to, to adjust and make plays and learn and then these these wide receivers you mentioned a bunch of them they've done that you know anywhere they've been. Speaking of making plays Turner with great individual effort. Break the initial tackle at the line of scrimmage, pick up the first down. Good opportunity here for Griffiths to work two minute offense, even though they've got it all the way down almost in the red zone. It's got two timeouts on the board, so plenty of time. Again, patience from those running backs. Turner just waiting for that push, and he picks up five. It's almost like in a lot of those runs, Mark, there isn't a hole, but the running backs are just waiting for that offensive line to push one yard, two yard, three yard, and just getting on someone's hip. Yeah, and you know, the, it's interesting. You think, okay, they're doing it to try to bring this, the linebackers and safeties up, but really it just allows more time for the quarterback to get reads. And you know, the more time you can get for a quarterback to make reads, the longer that routes can adjust downfield. So, so often in RPO, you're limited to slants or quick posts or quick out routes. In this offense, you can run the RPO with downfield digs, downfield outcuts, or combination routes, and they all can be successful. Remember the key that loses a shoe. Griffiths doesn't care. He's going to throw it anyways. Too high that time as he tried to get it to Keyshawn Williams on third down. So it's fourth down, and you got to assume. I'm not going to assume anything, but it looks like they're going to attempt the field goal. Mm. And all being said, good stop by the key debt defense. Again, getting Wake Forest down inside the red zone and forcing him to kick field goals. I mean, that stop with only 21 shoes. Somebody had to chuck one of their shoes off the field. Timeout here by the key debts. BMI, their first at the half. It's Mitch Griffiths. 14 of 18 in the first half, 176 yards and a touchdown, no interceptions. So taking care of the football, getting it to his playmakers. It's really spread it out as well, too. You think about Green's had a nice day. Morin with the touchdown. Perry on that last drive, a couple of catches. Mm -hmm. Running backs out of the backfield. Both his backs, Turner and Ellison, have been very efficient, both with over 60 yards rushing. Yeah, you're right. And you know, I think. There've been more of those short passes. When we, when we see Sam Hartman in the game, you get more of those long to mid, mid passes. Where last year they averaged 12 air yards per target. So meaning the yardage in the air that the ball traveled until it hit the receiver was 12 yards, and that was that. I mean that that's six most in the nation. You know, average is about nine yards. So you're not seeing as many of those downfield throws from Mitch Griffiths, but. Come the second half, I wouldn't be surprised if Warren Ruggiero opens it up because they're going to need that going forward. Dennis with the field goal. Not only Mitch Griffiths having a great debut, but redshirt freshman Matthew Dennis taking over for Nick Skiba, one of the all time great Demon Deacon kickers. And Dennis has had himself a perfect day so far. Don't want to jinx him, but nice first half, young man. Yeah, nice first half. I like you giving them props too, because no one no one talks about kickers unless they miss one. But it is a good job and it's a stressful position. This guy's done a good job too. Yeah, and, and you see these these short passes and yeah, I think this is a this is a, you know it's not like they're they're doing it just for him. It's a part of their offense. But I wouldn't be surprised and I would, I would kind of be happy to see them try to take some more shots deep, more shots over the middle as BMI tries to shot, stop and prevent some of the shorter routes. Let's give an opportunity for him to make plays down the field just like that one on the deep passes. And another thing we've I've noticed is the run after catch, the yards after catch for Wake Forest have been there today.
they, they were not there last year. I mean, they were 129th in the country in yards after catch, only 4.1 yards per catch after the after the catch. And so he's done a good job of leading his receivers and getting them to run with the football in their hands. Right, he calling a fair catch. Kedets now with 35 seconds to work offensively. You know, you bring Donovan Green back, who was injured all last year. You can put him on the outside. Now you got both Moore and, and Williams on the inside, and those guys are really big time run after catch guys. Yeah, yeah, they are. And, and keeping them fresh, too, right? Being able to rotate them and get them 50 50 reps was where, man, you, you run all the way across the field. You're running 30 yards sideways in order to get five yards vertical and then you can sub out and you can get someone else in and they do a really good job with their substitutions and still being able to play fast. Morgan to throw on first down nice catch behind him by Thomas picks up what he can that's six yards and gets out of bounds. to Raymond look at him dancing in the secondary gets to midfield so now maybe VMI will try and get something going here yeah, timeout call timeout there you did call timeout you start these two minute drills and sometimes you do quick passes or a screen pass or a run play and hey this run play worked now let's call timeout because we only need about 20 more yards and we're in field goal range got a heck of a kicker and Jerry Rice missed earlier in the day but he's a Block thinks he can hit from 53, and he's a very high percentage in his career. He's all SOCON and pushing for all America honors at the FCS level. So they've got a chance here. 25 seconds left, got one timeout on the board. It's Jerry Rice. Seen a lot of targets. Number 11, Andre Cooper. It's a redshirt sophomore out of Orlando, Florida, but they're they're very excited about him. And he's a 6'5, 210-pound wide receiver towards the bottom of your screen, working on a 5'11 cornerback in Gavin Holmes. Morgan to throw flushed out of the pocket. Got it to the sideline. Was able to hook up with Thomas. He gets out of bounds. Eight yards. Only five seconds off the clock. Thomas is senior from Roanoke. Wake opting to bring just four in terms of pressure. Sidearm throw. It's Thomas again. This time they'll stop the clock temporarily as they move the chains. Have that one time out on the board. Need to get a little bit closer here. Work towards the sideline again. Try to save your timeout. Get your field goal team on. Morgan has all kinds of room to run. Oh. Well, he brings it back inside and goes down to the 25. They'll call that last timeout. I thought he might have been able to take it to the house if he stayed outside, Mark. Yeah, take it. You know, and I, I don't know if this is what he was thinking. But if he was moving the ball closer to his sideline in case he did not pick up a first down to get the field goal team on faster, that'd be a heady play. However. You're also down 23. <laughs> you <laughs> need seven. You're trying to get points, right? It's like he came right back into the defense. It did look like that. Chris, I was trying to give him credit here, but I you're know. right. It did look like. Maybe he thought, look, I'm a good athlete and I'm kind of fast, but I ain't fast enough to outrun these ACC safeties. Yeah, Maybe they, he was thinking that. Right, and if you get tackled three seconds later in the field of play, so you don't get a chance. All right. So Jerry Rice on the field. Jerry Rice must have told him, look, I like it from the left hash better. He knew it. Forty two yards on the attempt. Snap is good, hold is good. Rice on the money. Nice drive. Coach Walkenheim. Put some points on the board as VMI 
was able to go down the field and got a 42 yard field goal from Jerry Rice. Both teams head to the locker room. Wake Forest with you swarming the ball, but on the offensive side, he wants his guys to con continue executing, but they must finish drives. And thanks, Larisha. They definitely had some good red zone stops defensively as Wake kicked a bunch of field goals in that first half, and that's how we're 23 3. Flags all over the field as we get started here in the second half. Keyshawn Williams on the return. He was dropped at the 24, but let's get the call. During the return, holding, receiving team number 26, 10 yard penalty, first down, Wake Forest. Quincy Bryant, the guilty party on that hold. So Griffiths and the Deeks will start in the hole here in the second half. Look at those numbers 14 for 18, 78% completions. No, I mean, no turnovers. No, yeah, no, I mean, that's the biggest thing, right? You, if you're going in as quarterback, and especially your first start, you want to protect the football. Don't make it easy for the key depths to get anything. And he's done a really good job with that, managed the offense well, does reads really well. Squeaky headset here. All right, now I got to adjust it. Bring it up. Ellison picks up about two. Montreal already there to make the stop. Well, you can see why VMI has had success in the SOCON yeah. over the last couple of years and coming off winning seasons. This is a team that obviously their athleticism has been elevated quite a bit over the last couple of years. Yeah, in their physicality. I mean, you, you watch them, you watch them play fast, but you watch them just play hard too. I mean, there's guys. Anytime the ball is blown dead, look at that, how many white jerseys are around the football after that scramble. And, you know, if you come into a game with maybe inferior talent at certain positions, effort will make up for a lot of that. And the key deaths have done a good job. Trying to get off the field here on third down. Nice pass. P pitching catch more and on the receiving end. That was a beautiful pass. Yeah, and that one looks routine, right? But that's not a routine throw. That is a deep out route across the field. Really good placement. And they're moving fast. Picked up the first down. Now Griffiths to throw again. Has all kinds of time over the middle to his tight end. Right near midfield, Blake Whitehart with the catch. Counted off at 23 yards. And that's what I want to see. Let him throw some over the middle. Let him take some of those shots down the field. It's a good job throwing it right over the linebacker, Evan Eller. Good catch by Whitehart. Griffiths now throwing a lot on this drive. Has all kinds of time. And coverage downfield prevents the completion. Nice job defensively by the Kedets. You should look at Alex Oliver, best cover corner on this VMI team. He's a junior. Started all eight games as a true freshman in the spring. 2021 during that spring season because of COVID. Best to cover guys you mentioned. Really good year last year as well. Ellison. About two. And you talk about you know, the key dads in BMI and a lot of in some of these FC, FCS schools, the SOCON specifically. For some of these guys, this past summer, spring, this is the first time they really had a full offseason because of that spring season that they played in 2021 leading right into a fall season. Going deep for Green. Single coverage out there inside the five. No flag either. A lot of contact. But Porter and Green battling it out. Porter got the better of him. There you are. You're seeing more of these down the field shots. And this is balls a little bit, a little bit underthrown. And there was contact there. And you know, obviously no flag, but I like seeing that. I like seeing those play calls. I like seeing Mitch Griffiths be able to just you know, throw some of those out there and test his arm strength. So now for just the second time in this game, Ivan Moore coming in to punt. Snap is high, goes over his head. Has to go back to get it, just gets enough on him. That's actually a really good punt. A great <laughs> punt under the circumstances. And the crowd lets him know about it. Mora kicks it all the way down to the 10-yard line. That's 41 yards net inside the 20. 
on a punt where he was running for his life in a lot of danger. Great individual effort. He was in all kinds of trouble here. Ends up being a great punt. Deke still up by down from Lexington, Virginia, home of the Key Dets, down in the Shenandoah Valley. Enjoying this game here in Winston-Salem. Seth Morgan going up top to Andre Cooper and just couldn't connect. I was just throwing it up for a prayer. Hey, good job throwing it away. Smart play. Again, not turning the ball over. Wake Forest, was they, they were phenomenal last year creating turnovers. And they had 15 guys, 15 different guys that created a turnover last year. Yeah, they created a lot of turnovers and turned the ball over too much. Raymond on the carry. Larisha, what's going on? Coming out of that break, uh, Coach Scott Walk told his team, hey, we've shown that we belong here. So he reminded his team simply of the core values that they play with, which represents winning football at VMI. That's playing with grit, brotherhood, and purpose. Those are the core values that he has been pushing for his team, all surrounded by what they call the new standard, which is building a winning culture, winning on the field and winning academically. Yeah, they've definitely turned things around in terms of the attitude behind the receiver that time, and Morgan's got to be kicking himself because he had his receiver chance Knox open in the middle of the field and just couldn't connect. Yeah, a little bit behind chance Knox. I feel like early in the game, that, that was humming for them. Yeah. You know, like they were connecting on those plays, and they just haven't been able to since that first quarter. Yeah, and it, yeah right now, it, they keep on getting pinned all the way back, right? They're doing a good job of... You know, forcing Wake Forest to either make mistakes in the red zone or to punt the ball and when they get down in their own, in the opposite territory, but they just haven't been able to get out and that punt's not gonna help them at no, all. Not helping at all more and coming up to make the catch and he does at the 43. That's 30 yards on the kick and Wake Forest will take over from right there. Sort of follow up on what Larissa was saying about VMI. I mean, you know, it was just cool talking to Coach Walkenheim about how this team has come together and how in his third season they went 0 and 11. Yeah. And he really had to like he looked in the mirror and yep. said, uh, I gotta I gotta start focusing on and figuring out what I'm doing wrong here. And to your point, you said it earlier in the day, they went to a player led type of team and a type of culture. Yep. They they were in a running conference, so they went to the passing game and that helped them recruit some players that wanted to play in that kind of an offense and they've just been able to build on that. Yeah, Coach Coach Walks said, you look I did I wasn't happy with myself. He said, I wasn't happy with myself as a head coach. I wasn't how happy with how I was leading the team. And he said, look, I, I didn't dive into myself. He read you know, Proverbs every day for 31 days. And you know, Solomon in the Bible is the most the wisest man ever to live. So he wanted to become wiser. Then yeah. he read books on how to create culture. And he realized, look, we got to have to be player led. Look at Turner bouncing it to the outside, inside the 20. All the way down to the 10. So a great catch by Keyshawn Williams, and then Turner follows suit with a nice run. And you know, making it player led, I think, was the was the foundation. So I can lay this foundation, let it player led, player driven, and and it's worked. Man, you talk about the back to back seasons with winning record for the first time in 60 years and a SoCon championship, and you will see their effort and the ability they're playing with today. Turner, patient, stays on his feet, still on his feet inside the five. Talk about effort. That's nine yards down to the four. Yeah, Christian, Christian Turner, I mean, you saw him spin out of tackles, run away from guys, and this is just power. And you know, you, you're not a full head of steam breaking these tackles. You know, he's he's walking and then breaking tackles and got an injured key dead on the field. We'll take a quick break while the staff attends to him. That's Taj Summy. They're with the, the general student population learning how to defend our country, which is great, amazing, and honorable. And then you watch them come out here and play. It's, you know, these are some amazing young men. First and goal for Wake Forest. Up the middle, 
just shy of the goal line is Christian Turner to tie a bow on that. About 50% of the student body elects to serve in the military, mm -hmm. one of the branches of service after graduation, about 50% opting to go into private sector and football only about 20 percent of the football team elects to serve after graduation yeah and coach walk did say that there sometimes there's some players who come they think they're not going to serve and they get through the program and decide to serve turner at the goal line as he get in officials have not given us a signal yet i think he got stopped so again effort by this vmi up front team up front outweighed mark by a considerable margin yes but still getting it done I guess a late signal, they decided it was a touchdown. The officials got together. That is a scrum right there. I don't know where you can see the football. Apparently, they talked things over and decided that Christian Turner got in. Touchdown number two on the night. 100 yards, couple of touchdowns. Good night so far for Christian Turner. Yeah, great night for Christian Turner. and Great job by, by both backs. Just Delson had some some good plays and Christian Turner some obviously that really big run in the first quarter where he broke a tackle cut his arm down and went for the touchdown Dennis now for the PAT money redshirt freshman from Charlotte puts it through flags down though let's check the call Side. Defense number 11. The penalty is declined. The try is good. Turner with touchdown number two. Wake Forest up 30 to 3 here in the third. Capped off with Louisville and Syracuse at 8 o'clock. All of them on the ACC network and on the ESPN app. The Boston College Rutgers game used to be an, an every year type game when they were both back in the Big East, both founding members of that Big East football. Zach Murphy kicking off for Wake Forest. Bridie at the five. Taken down to the 22. Bridie's the returning leading rusher for this team for VMI. I mean, he's got banged up a little bit last couple of weeks of August. Coach said he's been running a bit, feeling good, so putting him back to the return kicks. We haven't seen him at the tailback spot. There he is. Yeah, but Rashad Raymond, he's done a really good job in that backfield. A couple. A couple good runs, broken tackles, good burst through the hole. Hunter Rice now in the game behind Seth Morgan. Now comes to his side, Morgan will look to throw. Back shoulder, nice job defensively though. Tried to hit Leroy Thomas, J.J. Roberts. Looked really good at that corner spot tonight, made the play. Yeah, and it's, it's good to see these corners for Wake Forest playing well, too. You know, they got some young guys, probably one of the youngest positions groups on this team, all true sophomores and Gavin Holmes, J.J. Roberts, Kalen Carson. And they played really well tonight. Morgan gives it off to Rice. A little bit of room on the right side. Kobe Turner makes a stop four yards down the field. It'll bring a third down. Quincy Bryant also on the stop. Here's Kobe Turner. Another one of those D linemen wearing number zero. Yeah, Kobe Turner, they're happy about bringing him in from transfer from Richmond. 290 pound, fifth year senior. Had some size in the middle of that defense. Morgan looking to throw. Pressure up the middle, gets it away. Oh, yeah, that was a late hit on the quarterback. Really late. Like came down, pass incomplete, but. Isaiah Wingfield on the coverage. Personal foul, rough in the passer. Defense number 95, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Deion Bergen got there late. Yeah, good loop at the bottom of your screen by Jaheim Davis, but I mean that's that's too late. That's way, way, way too late. If I know Cutcliffe at all, he is not going to be happy with that <laughs> with that penalty. Fresh yeah. set of downs. Yeah, Bergen got a good from there. He was on Bruce Feldman's freak list. 
700 pound squatter, 400 pound wow. tower clean, and bench press quarterbacks late. Rice goes into the teeth of that Wake Forest defense. Nothing doing. Maybe a yard. Corey Johns on the stop. We're excited about the defensive front, defensive line. Rondell Boffer, we haven't called his name as much today. But Boogie Basham left two years ago. Rondell Bothroy took that place in last year. Second in the ACC in tackles for loss with 16 and a half. Warwick's going to have to throw this one away. LaRisha can add a little bit on Bothroy. What's going on, LaRisha? Well, you were talking about how he had those 16.5 uh, tackles for loss when we talked to defensive coordinator Brad Lambert. He said he is an extremely hard worker and yet a very serious football player. That's how he leads the team. Coach said his challenge with Bothroy every day is getting him to simply loosen up. <laughs> yeah, get him to loosen up and is he? And, and it was funny, we asked him about his personality, and Coach almost laughed. He's like, we, I just got to try to crack a joke, crack a smile. He's like, all, no BS. Like, this is football, and it's great to have a leader like that because you hold the, he holds the other guys accountable, but got to have some fun, too. Deeks bringing just three, they still get pressure. Ball up in the air, intercepted. Flag down, ball's picked off by Winfield. Oh. Little stutter step into the end zone. Two flags two down. Two flags down. Wingfield takes it in. Check all the laundry, though. One right at the point of the interception, and then one after the interception. It looked like it might have been pass interference on the offense at the point of the interception. But not sure what the other flag would be. Might have gotten Bergen again hitting the quarterback. There are fouls by each team. Pass interference, offense number eight, personal foul, roughing the passer, defense number 95. The foul's offset, repeat third down. It was Bergen again. Wow. Yeah, that's going to warn you coming off the field, young man. Sorry. You're right, here he comes. And, and that one was less egregious. Uh, that was, again, I, you know, being a former linebacker, I get biased towards that, but watch the, you know, it. He did take it. I, I yeah, feel but, like he pulled his but hands again, back. But again, you didn't have to touch him in the chest plate, right? You didn't have to do that. Well, a loud do-over. Mm. Underneath. Nice job defensively. Boy, that was Wingfield. No, that was not Wingfield. That was Brendan Harris. Joined this team from Vanderbilt after spring practice, so player with a lot of SEC experience. Decided to transfer in really during the summertime. We're just getting our first glimpse of Brendan Harris. First down, though, for V or fourth down, I should say, for VMI, and they're going for it. Morgan rolls to his left flag down, tries to get it to Thomas, and it's broken up on the play. Let's check the flag. Maybe a defensive offside. Roberts again making the play defensively in the secondary. Offside, defense number zero. Five-yard penalty results in a first down. Wow, you see, that's mm, fourth down and five, and Kobe Turner jumps. These are little mistakes right now in a game that you have in hand, Mark, that you got to think Coach Clawson's going to be unhappy with. Yeah, and you know, Coach Clawson, he, he's got all the starters in still, right? And, and I, you know, at this point in the game, the, that, that's what he wants to do, right? They haven't produced the way that he knows they should produce or need to produce to beat some of the ACC competition that they're going to face. And so, leave these guys in there. Let them pass in his... He's got notes. He's taking. He's got some notes. He was visibly upset. Yes. And, and letting his team hear about it on the sideline. Seven yards on first down. Now we'll bring third down to the four as Morgan couldn't connect with his receiver, Jack Cause, in the tight end. Morgan's thrown for 79 yards in this game, and I feel like 59 of them were in the first quarter, yeah. even in the first two drives. Really had a hard time finding his receivers open downfield. And coverage has gotten a lot tighter from this Wake Forest secondary. Morgan's going to throw. Incomplete. Wingfield again that time defending on the play. Chance Knox is intended receiver. Wink 
Mayfield's done a great job of breaking on the football. And, you, know, the, you talk to defensive backs and linebackers about breaking on plays and anticipating throws, and you know, it's about the arm action. Once that arm starts coming forward and it's a, clearly that's a pass, that's when you break. You don't wait till the ball's out of the hand. Good job by Wingfield. Now fourth down. As coaching staff, then you'll think it's okay to do it later. And then you, know, you know, you see him there. Look, you know, this is uh, again. There's nothing to hang your head about if you're a Demon Deacon defender, but you got to be smarter than what they had been on that series. Mesh to Ellison. He'll take it. Found just that little crease in the defense. Got to the next level. Picked up eight. Now Ellison trying to match Turner with a 100 yard game. He's got about 75 right now. Ooh. Fumble. Griffiths falls on it. Yep, there it is. That, that, that ball security that. Again, that becomes hard in this slow match because you gotta you gotta pull it, you gotta be have that comfort with the running backs. He's done a, a, just a fantastic job so far. But again, fatigue starts to set in. This is the first time, first game they're in pads, first time they're playing. Harry almost brought it in. Great job closing on the ball, Alex Oliver. Yeah, nice play by Alex Oliver. And A.T. Perry thought he had that one. Lawson again, irritated on the sideline. Yeah, and three and out, punted away. You want to know why? Because that was a lazy play by A.T. Perry. And A.T. Perry is good enough to make that catch, pull it into his body right away, and get that first down. And, you know, Coach Clawson is absolutely right. You need, if you know your player can make a play, and he doesn't execute because, for whatever reason, he relaxes, it needs to be addressed. Moore to kick from his goal line. Another great kick under duress, forcing the fair catch. That's going to be about a 46-yard punt from Moore and no return. Special teams have been very good today for uh, Wake Forest. Yeah, and, and good starting field position for VMI. You know, they're starting close to midfield. Kind of got themselves out of that hole back by their own end zone. Take a look at our ACC preseason poll. You know, Wake Forest, Atlantic Division, defending champs, fell to pit in the ACC championship, bring their quarterback back. So it's, it's going to be a tough division. Ironside now. Sorry about that, Mark. Colin Ironside in the game of quarterback for VMI. Sweet name, awesome name, old Ironside. But you, you, you kind of look at this, and you know, these are these are kind of in order that offense because last year that was. You know, again, you feel like it was a down year for Clemson. They did win 10 games, okay. but that's what a down year looks like for Clemson. Yeah, Ironside fakes the throw, no, no chance. Tried to get it to Grant Swinehart, his tailback. Richard sophomore from Knoxville. Colin Ironside, a little bit of time last year, threw for 623 yards, four touchdowns, a couple picks. Coach Walken High taking advantage of the time, getting everybody some playing time, because you never know when you're going to need these people down the road. Ironside, delay handoff. Here's Swinehart. Nice play, nice execution, too. Swinehart takes it into Demon Deacon territory. 15 yards, that's a first down. That is, that's first down, a great run. Good play call, safe draw when you're in the middle of the field. And you see what Brad Lambert and Coach Clawson are doing. Hey, we're not, you know. All the stars are in the game still. Forcing them to make these stops, learning how to play tired. Out to Swinehart. Got a couple blockers in front of him. Running hard after the catch, picks up eight. Mustafa and Hudson had to combine on the tackle, but that's eight yards downfield. Good block on the outside. Both of the wide receivers did a good job blocking. It's a good, tough running by Swinehart. That's Twombly, the tight end, who flexed out, and De Silva making the blocks downfield. And right now, this is a lot of the second team guys for BMI. Swinehart 
He'll pick up the first down. Yes, he will. Turner on the stop. So it's interesting. You've, you've seen Coach Wackenheim go to his backups before Coach Clawson in this game. And it's paying dividends for him. Another good pitch and catch this time. Julio De Silva on the receiving end. Junior out of Philly. And Colin Ironside looks anything but old Ironsides. <laughs> looks like sharp Ironsides right now. Yeah, it looks fresh. Some new wide receivers in for VMI looking fresh. And you know, it's, it's a 60 minute game. And moving the ball really well and putting together, putting together great defensive stop. Coming back with a good special teams play and then a good drive by this offense, getting him down close to scoring position. And now can they take that next step and get it into the end zone for a touchdown? Whistle on the play, gonna get a timeout on the field. Coach Walkenheim calling the timeout, talking things over with Colin Ironside and his offense. ACC PM, that's the ACC Network's new afternoon. Spent billions of dollars building out that studio. <laughs> Might as well put some, some use to it, right? <laughs> no, you can come build out my basement. Right. Your basement, you've already built it out. Well, we, yeah, we did. We, we, we moved. We moved up the ball. That's right. You Boston. moved away from the gym in the basement. I know. We had, do you have, what, what are you doing now for the gym? Yeah, I mean, between we, uh, you and your wife and the kids, that son of yours is going to be a. Yep. Got the tunnel on the wall. Pelt on tread. I'd be surprised if your son Boston isn't already working out and eating iron. Oh, uh, well. I have a neighbor. False start. Offense number 73. Five yard penalty. It's still second down. Austin Doyle jumped. You know, one of the joys of living in the city is that when you have a dog, you got to take him out for walks. And you take the dogs out for walks all the time, go with my kids. Boston's four. And our neighbor across the street, Walter, always asks Boston every morning if he's doing his push-ups and sit-ups, and Boston does. I'll bet. Starts early. Just a matter of days before he ends up with a high black on and a mohawk. <laughs> his hair is too good. <laughs> Iron side to throw. Has time. Now the pocket breaks down a little bit, but he's going to run with it. He picks up a yard. Kevin Pointer on that tackle. Transferred in for ULM. Another guy who brings some depth to that defensive tackle position. And they really feel like they got four guys that they can rotate in and that are pretty much interchangeable. And that's Kevin Pointer's one of those guys. Kobe Turner, Deion Bergen, Tyler Williams. Thomas in motion. Ironside looking to throw. It's his back out of the backfield. That Swinehart has all kinds of room inside the 10 to the 5. He scores. Good play. Missed assignment by Wake Forest. With, that, with the motion that happened earlier in the play, you got to get a linebacker out there. It could have been Kendra Wyman. The defensive end who was supposed to drop into that zone. But either way, a blown coverage led to a touchdown for Wake Forest defense. Jerry Rice on for the PAT. Copper fits working well for him. Splits the uprights. 30 to 10. With two, two minutes and a second left to go in this third quarter. Yeah, it's a 20-point lead, but the way the second half has gone, you know, Co Coach Clausen wasn't exactly ecstatic about things when yeah. he was talking to Larisha after the first yeah. half. Yep. I don't think he's gotten any happier. No, and you know, again, first game, you, you got, you think you got something coming in, and they do. I mean, they got a lot of talented players, and I think it's. You know, we talked to Coach Clausen and said, "Look, is it any different this year? Right now, you're not the underdog. I mean, Wake Forest has played for the past." 
10, 12 years long. Like I remember as the underdog pretty much every year. And Glosson said, look, we understand that we had a motto last year. Let's go from good to great. Just going to bowl games is not going to be good enough. We want to go past that. We want to be great. And this year, it's about the mindset is the same. It's we still want to go from good to great, even though we know we are already elevated where we are. We cannot take a step back, and that's what the coaching points are for him right now. How can he continue to push these guys to stay focused every day like they are the underdogs? Say Wake Forest team that hasn't had back-to-back -back winning seasons in the ACC since 2006 and 2007. The first year of that two-year stretch was when they won the ACC with Jim Grobe at the helm. Keyshawn Williams wants to take it out. Nice move, another nice move, 25, 30. Look at him cutting it back inside, down to the 39-yard line. 39 yards on the return, and maybe that'll spark this Wake Forest sideline. And, you know, it's been a long, long time since Wake Forest has beaten Clemson. Griffiths to throw, he's got all kinds of time. And he's got a receiver, that's green. Eludes a couple of tacklers into VMI territory. Nice job after the catch, 18 yards. And that's a way to respond. That's a way to do it. Get the ball out to your guys. Let them start making plays. It started with a great return. You talked about maybe it's going to spark them. Good job getting the ball to Green. Next week in Nashville is no cakewalk. No. I, mean, I know it's Vanderbilt, but they're an SEC team. They hung a 60 spot on Hawaii. And again, I know that's Hawaii. But they showed they can move the football. That's going to be a test. Ball batted up in the air and batted down. And it'll be a really good test for the defense, too. You know, because that's been the thing. Even, even versus schools that maybe don't usually put up a bunch of points, last year they gave up a bunch of points. So it's going to be important for them and their defense to, to hold that Vanderbilt team. And then you see right there. We don't know when he's coming back. No, he's, out, he's out indefinitely. Yep. So this could be Griffiths' team for the foreseeable future. Keeps it. It's more. Great throw. 30. Bang down at the 26. Good throw. Good zip on his pass. Going back, finding a your reliable target and Warren. Has all kinds of time over the middle of his tight end. It's Whitehart. He scores. Another beautiful pass, and Whitehart brings it in. Looks like they're going for two, keeping the offense on the field, but that was a phenomenal throw. And, right, this is why Dave Clawson is one of the best coaches in the country. Right? There was a series of an offensive drive, a defensive drive that were not going their way. There were guys out of place, out of assignment, penalties, penalties, and then he is able to get his team back. Starts with a special teams play, then two or three really good throws. That one to Whitehart right over the top of linebacker, again hitting the middle of the field, which they did earlier in this half. Kaiser Samuel, the key to down in the end zone. VMI staff taking a look at Samuel. Griffiths, 20 of 28, 274 yards, two touchdowns. Blake Whitehart, the receiver on that touchdown, tight end. Young man from right here at Winston-Salem. Larisha has more on him. Yeah, he grew up about 10 minutes from Wake Forest. His high school is actually within walking distance. So it's only right that he grew up a Demon Deacons fan. He watched and attended many games, and he said he saw guys like Michael Campanero, but he credits one guy for the reason why he came to Wake Forest, and that is tight end Cam Serene. And he said he always admired his play. He essentially wanted to follow or somewhat mimic his path. So now Blake is here. He's a starter, first-year team captain, and a key player on offense as we just saw and coincidentally guys he even wears the number 85. Yeah, Cam was an unbelievable player here and Blake Whitehart his first touchdown of the year I'm going for two. Griffiths has time he'll look to take it himself and does. Flag on the play let's check that might be holding right there in the middle of the offensive line. <laughs> you can see 
holding offense, 10 yard penalty, it's still the try down. You could see Clawson was just like gritting his teeth, right? He was like so close to being exactly what we wanted in another penalty. Look at Clawson's reaction here. <laughs> he sees the laundry and he's just like, we can't get it right. Yep. Now they'll kick the PAT. Hey, Mark, you've been in this position many times before. It's going to be a long week of practice for Wake Forest. they got to get ready to go on the road and play a team in the SEC next weekend. Yeah, it is. And, you know, it's these are learning moments, right? And I think, you know, Coach Gloss is the type of coach who, I mean, he's been around enough players. He understands it. He keeps his head on his shoulder. Like, he knows how to fix this, right? And it's, you know, you'd, you don't want this to happen, but you'd rather have it happen in a game where you have a clear lead where you can correct it over the, the week and then get ready to go back and play again. Doesn't take away from that man's play right there and that couple good catches over the middle. Well, this man right here in Griffiths. Yeah. Saw Michael Kern, very left side of the screen there, maybe warming up that arm a little bit. Might see him at some point in time in the fourth quarter. 27 point game as we're in the final 42 seconds of the third. Four scoring drives on the night, under two minutes for Wake Forest, so they've been able to strike quickly. As they usually do. It's one thing about playing defense for Wake Forest. You get the ball back to your offense, you better ready to go out on the field, not because they're punting, because they might be scored a touchdown within 20 seconds or so. Murph puts a toe into it. Righty calls fair catch at the six yard line. Better have some depth on that defense too for that very reason. Yeah, no you do and and that's why you know it's so important to have a rotation. And you, you, Brad Lambert was talking, he talks about building depth and you know that linebacker spot, those defensive front spots, even you know especially corners as well. Like these guys could be running and you know Wake Forest isn't a huge man-to-man -man team, so you're not going to get guys running streaks down the field every single play. Right. However, you do need guys that are quality backups because if not, in ACC play with the type of quarterbacks that you're in the ACC, if they see a guy who's unable to fulfill that backup role, they're going to pick him apart the entire game. Our inside the throw. Nice catch. Ivan Thorpe making the grab. I tell you, one player is chomping the bit to get to Nashville and play is Ryan Smenda, the mm. linebacker who didn't play today because of a targeting call in the bowl game. You called the yeah. Gator Bowl, had to sit the entire game today. So, you know, he's and guys like Dylan Hazen and these linebackers have done a nice job filling in for him. But Smenda is going to be—he's a difference maker at that linebacker spot. Yeah, and he's also a leader and a captain of this team. And we look at last year, Ryan Smenda and Luke Masterson really played the lion's share of the plays at that linebacker role and not, not a lot of other guys had any any playing time. So this has been some good quality reps for some of the backups at linebacker. That's going to wrap up the fourth quarter here in Winston-Salem. Wake Forest 37-10 over VMI. VMI with a second down and about six from their own 29. Ironside had a receiver dropped. Thorpe couldn't hang on. Ironside the backup spelled Seth Morgan who played in roughly two and a half quarters for VMI. Ironside led him on a touchdown drive in their last time with the football. So Coach Walken on going with Ironside here. Swinehart's his tailback that time. Thorpe didn't miss. Made the catch. He's right at the sticks. Isaiah Wingfield making the stop. He might be just shy. Yeah, it'll be just about half a yard shy of that marker to gain, and VMI's going to go for it. Ironside trying to get Wake Forest to jump. They've done that already at one point in time tonight. Wake Forest changing up their defense. Swinehart looking to the sideline. Play clock down to 10. Side will throw. It flushed. Near side has a receiver. That's a first down. 
Really good. Nice shot by De Silva. Yeah, really good play. Not only by Ironside having the confidence to throw that ball out there, but you mentioned De Silva coming back to the football, catching the ball with his hands, picking up the first down. And getting deep enough so when he comes back for it, correct, he's able to pick up the yardage for the first down, even though they only needed a yard. They got it. Swinehart, that's a really nice move right at the point of attack to get free, pick up an extra five yards. And, and Wake Forest defensively, I mean, they're, they're playing with two deep safeties right now and pulling a linebacker out of the box, just leaving five defenders in that box. And, you know, in the, even though this is an air raid offense, that says run all day. Six guys in the box now, still two high safeties. Now we'll get an illegal procedure call against VMI. False start. Offense number 70. Five yard penalty. It's still second down. Will Reed, a little twitchy, the redshirt sophomore from Richmond. Left tackle moving on the play. Only the fourth penalty by VMI all day. Wake Forest with seven. Second and ten. Ironside to throw. Rolling the pocket. Too high. Good coverage out there by Zay Wingfield. A nickelback position. We talked about this 4-2-5 defense. And they've been in 4-2-5 defenses for the past few years, but you've seen more of a safety linebacker position in that fifth DB in that slot. It transitioned to more of a cornerback, and you see Isaiah Wingfield has done a fantastic job today of breaking on routes. Started his college football career. Oh, Ironside gets dropped. They have Bothroyd. lost the football, too. And that's Bothroyd right there. Got the football. He did. Made the sack and the fumble were causing and the fumble recovery. Stat, stat, stat. All on number 40. <laughs> Dude, another Hawaiian shirt. That dude's like the dorm room hero. Yes. Isn't he? Yeah, for sure. Oh, the RA, 60 year senior. <laughs> He's the cool RA. Quentin Cooley getting the carry. Getting some reps, pick up four yards. How'd you get along with your RA, Chris? Never had one. Never lived in the dorms. Yeah. Of I, was, I was a 60 year senior, though. <laughs> That's true. That part of that story is true. Van Wilder esque? That happened. Nice. Managed to get out though. Cooley again. Escapes one tackle, then cuts it back inside nicely. Great effort inside the 15. Takes him down to the 14. 10 yards on the carry. Yeah, we thought we'd see Quentin Cooley a little bit. A little bit bigger back. 5'9, 215. Downhill guy. True sophomore season, got action played in 12 games last year. Griffiths to the end zone. Has a receiver, touchdown! Nice catch by Jamal Banks. Another young player we're gonna see a lot more of. As a matter of fact, Clawson said Banks might be the next great receiver to come through Wake Forest, true sophomore. Yeah, he did. He knows what he's talking about. Good job, he played about 10% of the snaps last year. Coach said that's going to go up for sure, and he keeps making catches like that. The 6'4", 210-pound sophomore out of Washington, D.C. is going to get a lot more playing time. Dennis on for the try. Check that Murphy. Murphy hits it, 44-10. Griffiths. 288 yards, three touchdowns in his first start as a Demon Deacon. Business, you know, textiles. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool, though, because it's kind of kept that old city charm, but it's small, and it's a lot of people are, are moving into the city. Briney, who's going to cut it back, gets out to the 25. Some of those 
students right there probably were out there last night. Die hard tonight too. Oh, yeah. Had a huge student section. Like every student on this campus was here at the start of the game. We whittled down a little bit. Yeah. As the hours have progressed. Yeah, a little bit. That's kind of an understatement. Brian, here. our statistician said, because Wake Forest students got to go to class tomorrow. I don't think that's happening. <laughs> Opening game of the year. I don't know how you scheduled your class schedule, but I was uh, had minimal responsibilities on Fridays usually. Colin Shannon now a quarterback, VMI. There's a look at Colin Ironside. Good little stint here. Three or four drives. Yeah. Let VMI to their only touchdown of the day. No hand off to Shannon. Swinehart still in. He's also put a good showing on a tailback. Gets forced wide on this play. Kevin Pointer was a big part of that play before Bernard Gooden finally brought him down. Another young player on this defense, redshirt freshman out of Montgomery. There's Pointer. Yep. Good push by that defensive line. Getting vertical. A little TFL there, set him third down along. Swinehart said, no, I don't want it. <laughs> it's about to get the handoff, and Kendron Wayman and about four other Demon Deacons were in his mug. But you keep it. Jack Colbert's in the punt for VMI. Gone inside of 10 minutes left to go in this game. Jackson Hensley back to receive this punt, standing on his own 40. End over end, Hensley will call fair catch at his 34, makes it. 44-yard punt, nothing on the return. They have a new quarterback for the Demon Deacons when we come back. Up 34. Of, you know, we talked about the questions coming into the game, the... the I guess the lack of knowledge from the fan base of what he could really do. We didn't really know what we could do, but he showed that he, he can run this offense. He can zip the ball out there. He can make all the throws. He had a really, really good performance. Demont Claymore now in a tailback for Wake Forest and a new quarterback, Michael Kern. No relation to former Ohio State quarterback Rex Kern. I already looked that up. Thought for sure it was going to be the case. Wasn't. Michael, though, redshirt sophomore from Orlando, getting some playing time here in the fourth quarter. You mentioned Demont Claiborne. He's a four-star recruit, came in here, true freshman. Great spring, great summer. Here he is on the swing, loses his footing though, goes down, they'll lose about five yards. But you talk about what kind of changes with programs when you have the success that Wake Forest has had and Dave Clawson has, ha has had, and you start getting some of these four-star guys sign up and come here and and, you know, really, the schedule stays the same for Dave Clawson. You know, I'm sure he tells them in recruiting, look, we got guys here. And, you know, you might play a little bit as a freshman, but the, the goal is to register you, to, to help you improve, to get that extra year. And then you can continue in your, your second, third, fourth year and really make some big plays. And we'll see some action here from Mon Claiborne. Also excited about 81, Wesley Grimes, who's a four-star recruit. Right. That's Jack here on campus. Jackson Hensley. Yep. Redshirt freshman, the intended receiver there. That was actually a beautiful ball by Michael Kern. She's defended nicely by Noel Innocent. So it brings on Zach Murphy to punt it away. Chance Knox, standing on his own 24-yard line, will receive it for the Keydets. Once again, they bring a little bit of pressure, but a good punt from Murphy. Forces Knox to 
called a fair catch at the 32. 34 yards on the kick. Kick. Zero on the return. 44-10. Team of Deacons on top. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and in the process of building a huge new football facility as well. Bernard Gooden, Kendrick Wayman, just hammering Colin Shannon. <laughs> this was a no chance. Good inside move, good energy. Talk to the coaches about 92, Bernard Gooden. He's got really, really twitchy, really good job of using his quickness. Saw that in that play. Shannon's going to keep it. Dive forward. Minimal gain on the play. Here you get a good look, Gooden. Richard Freshman didn't play last year out of Montgomery, Alabama. He's gonna be a good, good depth player for them. A lot of upside to a lot of these guys in the defensive front, defensive end position. Got Bernard Gooden, Retro freshman, Jasheen Davis is a true sophomore. Defensive tackle Wyatt Crespi getting some playing time as well. Mm -hmm. So how fired up he was to get in there and get after the quarterback. Another sack. Go. Kendron Wayman, 35. Another true sophomore. Fourth down and forever, forcing the punt. Take another look at it. Good twist move up front. 44 gets up the field. Good job getting underneath. Couple sacks on that drive. And see, look at that. That's. See, when those guys work hard all yeah. summer long and all week long heading into the game and they finally get a chance to play, yep. teammates are happy for them. Jackson Hensley back to receive this punt. Another good kick. Colpus had a nice night punting for VMI. Hensley from his 32. 48 yards on the kick, give him about six on the return. Let's take another look. We've seen a lot of good things from Wake. Tonight, obviously, missing key piece in Sam Hartman. Mitch Griffiths had a really good game. Saw a lot of good things from the running back, Christian Turner. Claiborne. Oh, big hit. Yeah. Helmet gear pops off. Quinn Cooley checked that on the run. Just a good look at Sam Hartman there. Been around this team during this entire process. It was August 9th. A non football related medical situation. He was at practice, I think, the next day, Mark. And he's been yep. here with this team. Really has another coach. And certainly a, a guy who is providing motivation, not only for Mitch Griffiths, but really all of his teammates that he's been with now for years. Yeah, it's got to kill him, though, Mark. You know, yeah. I was talking to you before the game, because yep. your situation was, was different from his yep. from a medical perspective. But you were forced to take off right. the headgear and wear sweats and watch your teammates play. That had to kill you when you were playing yeah, at Boston yeah, College. Yeah, and, you know, I, I talked to Sam before the game and just tried to give a little bit of encouragement. But yeah, you're right. When, when you when you're getting the game you love taken away from you with something that's out of your control, it's really hard. And you know that happens for everybody at some point when they're told they can't play again. But when you're in your kind of prime, right? You, you're you're coming off a fantastic season. You're ready to go and do it again. And you're about yourself. to set every passing record in school history. Exactly. And and he's you know he came out earlier, uh, kind of before this all happened, and said this is going to be his last year at Wake Forest because he's been here since 2018, but he's only a redshirt junior, so he has more eligibility next year but he said this is going to be it for him and you just feel for him because you know he wants to be out there you know he loves playing the game you just see that from watching him on film interacting with his teammates and you know unable to do that right now and he said i'll be back soon hopefully you know so we're excited to see him when he does get back the term is indefinite right now but as you said you know, he, he, he hopes to be back this year, and certainly Wake Forest fans, and really all college football fans, hope to see him back. Yeah. 
you know, selfishly, I want to see him playing because I love watching him play, and this team is so exciting with him at quarterback. Yeah. And they may still very well maybe with Griffiths. Yeah. But, you know, for him, really, it's just about getting healthy. Yeah. And that's what we all hope ultimately is the, is the ultimate the ultimate prize at the end of that, you know, the journey that he's on. And indefinitely, it's such a, an ominous turn, right? Like indefinitely, could be, he could be back tomorrow. But right now, they're just waiting for clearance from the medical staff and the doctors that he's seeing. Nick Regano on the catch for Wake Forest. Wesley, Saw Wesley Grimes made a yep, catch, yeah. Yep, that's he's in the game, bottom of your screen. Michael Kern getting some run here in the fourth quarter. Passes is Demont Claiborne. Mm. Good burst. Picks up eight yards. Really good all-purpose back. The spring game had some fantastic catches out of the backfield. So a patience, burst through the hole, physicality. Wake Forest gone over 500 yards of total offense. Balance to 294 through the year, 211 on the ground. They will look to add to that total here. Stiff arms to defender. Good pursuit by VMI, though. Knocks him down at the line of scrimmage. Don't forget ACC Huddle Crew joins us right after the game. Complete breakdown, interviews, highlights. Jordan Cornett, Eric McLean, EJ Manuel, Eddie Royal in studio. Not only on the ACC network, but also streaming on the ESPN app. Inside of two minutes to play here from Winston-Salem. So Wake Forest is going to get the W at a conference. Start the year 1-0. Scheduled to get decidedly more difficult on the road at Vanderbilt next weekend. And they've got Clemson, Florida State looming here in September. I think Dave Clawson saw some really good things from his team. Some really good things to be encouraged about. There are obviously going to be some coaching points. Want to finish better in the red zone. We do a good job of converting to touchdowns. Get off the field on defense. Yeah, too many mistakes, too many penalties, keeping drives alive for VMI. Yep. And, you know, the penalties and giving up first down, that happened last year, but the converting in the red zone, they were fantastic last year. 70% of their drives, they were 19th in the country and turning red zone drives into touchdowns. And so yeah, that's something that has to be improved. Final minute of this contest here from Winston-Salem. Mark and I and Larisha will board a flight tomorrow to Beantown, hometown for you, yep. Mark. And we've got Boston College and Rutgers and what's probably going to be a pretty good game, I would think, on Saturday at noon. Big Ten team, Rutgers coming in. Greg Schiano in his third year there for the Scarlet Knights, building something once again, mm -hmm. as he did once before. And Boston College, full Dracovic back healthy, quarterback. They're going to be very multidimensional offensively. for VMI. Might get one more play before the final horn sounds in this contest. Shallow. Not a whole lot of room. Powers his way for a couple of more yards. See if the key dads choose for one more play. Shallow. Can't get back to the line of scrimmage, and that'll do it. Forty-four ten, our final. 
successful first start for Mitch Griffiths as our two coaches meet in the middle of the field. For Coach Clausen. Just getting ready for Vanderbilt in Nashville next week for VMI. Back to the drawing board and looking forward to bigger and better things in the SoCon 